Java inheritance. The super reference. The reserved word super can be used in a class to refer to its parent class. Using the super reference, we can use a parent's members. Like the this reference, what the word super refers to depends on the class in which it is used. However, unlike the this reference, which refers to a particular instance of a class, super is a general reference to the members of the parent class. Constructors cannot be used in a child class, even though they have public visibility. Yet, we often want to use the parent's constructor to set up the parent's part of the object. The super reference can be used to refer to the parent class and often is used to invoke the parent's constructor. One use of the super reference is to invoke a parent's constructor. The word to class shown on the screen instantiates a derived class and invokes its inherited and local methods. Book 2, shown on the screen, is the parent of the class Dictionary 2, which we will see in a moment. Book 2 and Dictionary 2 have explicit constructors used to initialize their instance variables. Book 2 represents a book. It is used as a parent of a derived class to demonstrate inheritance and the use of the super reference. Dictionary 2, shown on the screen, represents a dictionary, which is a book. It is used to demonstrate the use of the super reference. The Dictionary 2 constructor takes two integer values as parameters for the number of pages and definitions in the book. The Book 2 class already had, has a constructor that sets up the parts of the dictionary that were inherited, but we cannot invoke it directly, so we use the super reference to get it in the parent class. The Dictionary 2 constructor then initializes its definitions variable. A child's constructor calls its parent's constructor. Generally, the first line of a constructor uses the super reference call to a constructor of the parent class. Otherwise, Java will automatically make a call to super at the beginning of the constructor. This way, a parent class always initializes its variables before the child class constructor begins to execute. We can only use the super reference to invoke a parent's constructor in the children's constructor. If we do this, the super reference must be the first line of the constructor. The super reference can also be used to reference other variables and methods defined in the parent's class. A child's constructor is responsible for calling the parent's constructor. The first line of a child's constructor should use the super reference to call the parent's constructor. The super reference can also be used to reference other variables and methods defined in the parent's class. Multiple inheritance. Java supports single inheritance, meaning that a derived class can only have one parent class. Multiple inheritance allows a class to be derived from two or more classes inheriting the members of all parents. Collisions, such as the same variable names in two parents, have to be resolved. Again, Java does not support multiple inheritance. In most cases, the use of interfaces gives us aspects of multiple inheritance without the overhead. Overriding methods. When a child class defines a method with the same name and signature as a method in the parent class, we say that the child's version overrides the parent's version in favor of its own. Overriding happens often in inheritance. A child class can override the definition of an inherited method in favor of its own. The new method must have the same signature as the parent's method, but can have a different body. The type of the object executing the method determines which version of the method is invoked. Overloading versus overriding. Don't confuse the concepts of overloading and overriding. Overloading deals with multiple methods with the same name in the same class, but with different signatures. 
overriding deals with two methods, one in a parent class and one in a child class that have the same signature. Overloading lets you define a similar operation in different ways for different data. Overriding lets you define a similar operation in different ways for different object types. Class hierarchies. A child class of one parent can be the parent of another child, forming a class hierarchy. Here is an example of a business hierarchy. Business is the parent. It has two children, retail businesses and service businesses. Retail businesses also has two children, Walmart and Macy's. Service businesses has one child, Great Clips. A child class can be the parent of its own child class. What's more, many classes can be, can be created from a single parent. There is no limit to the number of children a child can have or to the number of levels a, child, a class hierarchy can have. Two children of the same parent are called siblings. Although siblings share the characteristics of their common parent, they are not related by inheritance because one is not used to create the other. Two children of the same parent are referred to as siblings. Common features should be put as high in the hierarchy as reasonable. An inherited member is passed continually down the line. Therefore, a child class inherits from all of its ancestor classes. There is no single class hierarchy that is appropriate for all situations. The object class. A class called object is defined in the java.lang package of the standard of the java standard class library. All classes are derived from the object class. If a class is not explicitly defined to be the child of an existing class, it is assumed to be the child of the object class. Therefore, the object class is the ultimate root of all class hierarchies. The object class contains a few useful methods which are inherited by all classes. For example, the toString method is defined in the object class. Every time we have defined toString, we have actually been overriding an existing definition. The toString method in the object class is defined to return a string that contains the name of the object's class together along with some other information. All objects are guaranteed to have a toString method via inheritance. Thus, the printLine method can call toString for any object that is passed to it. The equals method of the object class returns true if two references are aliases. We can override equals in any class to define equality in some more appropriate way. The string class, as we've seen, defines the equals method to return true if two string objects contain the same characters. Therefore, the string class has overridden the equals method inherited from object in favor of its own.